greetings this morning and shook hands, and I told you to go shake hands with people you didn't like, and I shook hands with the whole choir. <laughs> <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> they say, you know, like us, we're not staying, so it works out sometimes if you lay your plans properly. <laughs> and if the goal is to get rid of people, then you say the right things. But I also, I also wanted to say that I'm going to go down to the store and get me some potted meat, RC and blue pie, and take them home and have me a picnic. <laughs> I'm going to do that in the dining room at the house, but i got to do it on the floor because we don't have a table. We can't go outside because grass is too tall. I cut the tree down last winter to eat the house with. <laughs> Okay, now, now I'm going to talk Oklahoma. I wanted to prove that I can speak two languages too. I can speak, I can speak Alabama and I can speak Oklahoma. If you got your Bibles, I want you to open to the book of Job. Now we're going to have a short lesson this morning. Because we've got a long invitation. Because you guys really need that. And, uh, I, I spoke to some people already who added me on the back and they're expecting me to do something really good today. I'm sorry. I don't have it. I'm, I'm not it, but you guys are. And I have, I'm feel privileged to be up here and to be part of this. And if you see me doing this and this today, if you would just remind me that my glasses are up here. <laughs> that won't push it back like that. And I also wanted to say good morning to my Sunday school class. Since I wasn't there this morning, I wasn't here doing things. Good to see y'all. I appreciate you being here. Those of you who stayed long enough to come to the service too, because they knew I was preaching. Go read the whole chapter of Job chapter 1. We'll do this quickly with very little comment. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. There were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses in a very great household, and he had a business selling manure for people's gardens. <laughs> so that this man was the greatest of all men of the East. And his sons went and feasted in their houses at every one his day, and sent and called for three sisters to eat too and drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sacrificed them and sent and sacrificed them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And you can guess where he's walking at. And if you're in here today and you feel uncomfortable because you have a footprint on your chest or on top of your head, you know where he's been. <laughs> Just for the record. And the Lord said unto Satan, As I considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear it off or not? Hast thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hand and his substance has increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. You notice that all the, the wealth that Job had was in pigs and sheep cows and houses and children, but it does not, it talks about his increase, but it doesn't say he was a millionaire, and it didn't say he had a huge bank account. And this, this is an aside, this is not part of the message this morning, okay, this is something I want to say. I think it's a shame that we count our blessings in dollars and cents, because the ones that don't come in dollars and cents are so much greater than anything that money could purchase at any price. Amen. There are people in this world who have more money than they could ever spend in a lifetime. And they get up every morning and go back to the battle and fight to make more money. And they are some of the most miserable people 
on the face of the earth. Happiness does not come in dollars and cents. It doesn't come in houses and cars. It comes in the Spirit of God in our hearts and lives and the fulfillment and the happiness that we get from being His children. If you count your, your prosperity any other way, in any other manner, in any number of things, in your toys or your dollars or your home or even in your friends, you miss God's blessing. The richness of heaven comes from God directly to your heart. And it's deposited on a regular basis. And we miss out because we can't get that in our heads. That every day is a brand new day. And every day, God pours that stuff in our hearts. And we can, we can love it and enjoy it, or we can dismiss it and go back out in the world and try to shovel up a few more dollars for a bank account. So be wary how you count your prosperity. That's done. We're going to go back to the message. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, upon himself, only upon himself put not forth thy hands. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon us and took away, took them all away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there also came another and said, The Chaldeans made their Band, made out their bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only have escaped to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, that it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only have escaped to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground. And worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. Thither the Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this, Job, sin not. Again, there was a, going to the second chapter. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came present to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came among them also to them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, From going in to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. You, you know that already already, you know, with he's walking on you, you know this you're part of his path. Okay? I like repeating that. And the Lord said that Satan, unto Satan, hast thou considered thy servant Job that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feared God and should evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, that all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is thine. He is in thine hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto the crown. And he took him a posture and scraped himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Just give up. I want to show you from this message. We've talked about this. Brother Steve has preached about this. You can learn this in Sunday school. But I want you to see one thing that's happening in Job's life that happens in our lives. All this Job went through, Job continued to put his faith and trust in God. There was nothing that Satan was able to bring against Job from the outside that would make him give up or cease to worship God or question God or even say, why me, God? And in the next chapters that follow, you'll see his beloved friends come and they're going to stand before him and one by one they're going to give their opinions and their final opinion turns out to be, well, Job, you must have sinned. There must be some sin that you're not sharing with us and you're taught not telling us. 
And there must be something that you've done wrong to God and He's paying you back. And what was Job's response? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But we have little things in our lives that we look to that they bother us. And as these things bother us, if we turn our eyes away from God and we turn our eyes on to the problem or on to the person, we look and all of a sudden there's a little wall that stands between us and God and in front of that wall is a problem. And the more we identify the problem, the taller the wall gets. And we we, not God, we build walls that surround us to the point that we cannot find God anymore. He gets away from us. And the pain is awesome. But Job looked at the walls and he kept his eyes fixed on God and on Jesus the Lord. And in doing so, he was able to overcome the walls. And even though the walls were there, he didn't pay attention to them. He dismissed them. Let me show you another story. If you want to open your Bibles with me, look to Mark chapter 14. Please, 
let this cup pass from me. Don't make me do this. Don't, don't send me on to the cross. I, I don't want to bear the burden of the sins that I didn't commit. I don't want to go through with this, God. Change it. Do something different than this. And then he said, but not what I want. Not what my flesh wants. Not because I already know the pain and the agony and the humility that I'm about to go through. But because this is your will for these people you love. Not my will, but your will be done. I will do what you have asked me to do. And he tore down the walls. And he stood face to face with God. And he saw him as Father, and that's why the agony became even, even worse as he hung on the cross. And he's bearing the sins of the world, and he's been through all the punishment and the beatings and the slapping and the spitting, and his hands are nailed and his feet are nailed, and he's hanging on the cross. And he looks up to God, and he says, God, where are you? Father, Abba. Daddy, where are you? He knew that agony was going to come. And he knew that that day would be when he could not stand face to face with God because he bore the sins of the world. And the sins of the world, listen, if you are a believer, you're in good shape. You may need to straighten your life up and you may need to tear down some walls, but you're in good shape. But if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as Savior, you will have to bear your own sin. You will stand before a holy and righteous God and you will hear the words, Depart from me. I never knew you. And you will be passed off into a lake of fire called hell. But because Jesus said, I am sorrowful, I am broken to the bone. I am sorrowful unto death. I wish I could just die. I will do what you called me to do. See, pain and agony and sorrow are not just given to a few people. Lots of people have that problem, the pain. And these walls are built up. And we get scared and we get fidgety and we, we, we want God to change things. And God says, just do what you're doing. Job said, even if he slays me, yet will I trust him. Unto death, if God chooses to take me out as I'm dying, I will still praise his name. I will still lift my heart and my eyes to God. And I will still live for Him. And Jesus said, the sorrow for me is so deep that it's unto death, but I will keep my eyes on you. I will trust you. I will follow you. Now this is going to be a short message because I've got something I want to do with you today. But I want to show you in our congregation a few. This is not all of the problems that we have in this congregation. But I want to show you something. I'm going, to, I'm going to step down for just a second. And I'm going to talk to Joanne. I told her I was coming. So she knows this. How many of you know Joanne Beaver? You all know Joanne. Every, everybody knows. But if you haven't met Joanne because you're not looking, she's there. Yeah. But Joanne, Joanne is my sweet friend. And bless her heart, do you know that she lives with pain every day? She lives with oxygen breathing in her lungs because her lungs' capacity to take it out of the air is not enough. She's got a wall. But Joanne spends her days at their retirement village going to see people and asking them to come to church with her and telling them about the Lord. And Joanne's got a wall, and she deserves 
our prayers. And we, we're going to pray for her this morning. I want you to meet somebody else. This is my mama. Come on, stand up. You stand up here. This is my mama. We've adopted each other. I adopted her, and she adopted me and Mary, and she calls us her son and daughter, and I call her my mama. Right? And I love you. This young lady, not too long ago, she spent weeks, maybe months, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning and baking cakes and baking bread. And I've had some of those cakes. And you may not like me saying this, but I'm going to tell you, my favorite is her rum cake. <laughs> now, just, just to, to make sure you understand, the rum is cooked in the cake, so the alcohol is gone. It's not soaked after it's done. But I'm going to talk to her about one of those one of these days. But so bless her heart. Thank you. You can sit down, sweetheart. Alvo worked all those days baking those cakes to buy that bus. But this woman lives in her. It's hard for her to move around. She get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and start baking cakes and bake cakes all day long. And go to bed having laid out the ingredients to start at 4 o'clock the next morning. Bless her heart. This lady has hurt in her life. And I know that you know other people in this room that have those kind of hurts. But I'm going to let me find here is Janice, you don't have to stand up. Bless her heart. If Janice is not here on any given day, the church is quiet. <laughs> But her heart is in the right place. <laughs> Janet, when I first came to church here, Janice was walking and moving about and she was involved in a lot of things. But her health has gone down and now she walks with the aid of a cane and sometimes with the aid of a walker. And her legs hurt and she lives with this other guy. <laughs> we need to pray for her. Not Gary's not easy. But there's there's pain in that life. Stuart, stand up here. I just I didn't know this until recently. I suffer from neuropathy in my feet, and they hurt like the devil. And my friend Stuart, I found out, has the same thing. If you some of you here have had neuropathy, but if you've not had it, you don't know the pain of every step you take. Even if putting your feet up and just resting somewhere, they, your feet just hurt. And I didn't know that about you, brother. But I do know now. I know that you're a pain to other people, but I didn't know that you had a pain. God oh, bless you. Where is Carl at? Right here. He's right here. Stand up, Brother Carl. I want to, Brother Carl Marine served this country, put his life on the line, and he came out with his hearing problem, and he misses a lot of things because it's his hearing. And he comes to church faithfully, he doesn't miss a service, and even if he sits in a room where he can't hear what's going on, he sits there quietly and faithfully and listens to what he can hear and pays attention to what's going on around him. But he is a blessed man. I, I can count on a hug when I see Carl. I know one's coming. But bless you, that, just, just Tom... Bless his heart, I talked to him this morning. He's got more ailments than a whole clinic full of doctors to cure. I'm not going to come over and make you stand up, but raise your hand up, Tom, over here. And Tom, his wife has got some problems, and he lives every day with his own misery, plus taking care of her. And, and you know when people get older, they forget who they are, and they don't know what's going on. And, and sometimes it gets really, really tedious and hard. So we've got these walls built up. Donna's going through some stuff right now with her husband. And don't understand it. It came on suddenly. And, and it's just hard. But what I want you to know. Bobby Dyer. Bobby Dyer, yes. I just want you to know. That in this room. Right now. There are people that are hurting. Not just physical, medical reasons. But depression. Depression. And anxiety and anguish and, and life just seems to be dealing everybody a hard time. And, and in this room, in this room, people that we love 
they don't come down here and fuss and gripe and carry on about what's going on in their life. They come down and do what they can. We have to come to a point where we dismiss all that stuff and we turn everything over to God and we spend our time instead of griping and complaining and wishing things were better and praising His name and singing his songs, and loving his people, and being the person that God made us to be when he saved us and changed our lives. Now, I've got a video I want you to watch, and, and I want you to see this is a young man who has a prospect of, of a healthy, good life. But about a year ago, he ran into some problems. This, this guy's a singer, and he wrote a song, and he says... When I wrote this song, I don't I didn't know why I wrote it. But after that year, after the year that he went through, he understood why he wrote the song. I want you to listen to his story and I want you to hear the song. And then we're gonna have an invitation. We're gonna go home. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair. He has given me a new song to sing. Amen. I believe that God can give you a new song for a new season. And this next song that we're about to sing is a song I wrote just over a year ago. And when I wrote it, I didn't know who it was for. And then I got diagnosed with cancer. And the cancer began to leak a chemical in my body to the point that I, my body began to shut down and I looked like a plague victim and I was in a wheelchair and they told me, you might not walk again. After many painful surgeries, the cancer came back. I had to do more surgeries, chemotherapy, radiation, and they told me, you might not sing again. You might not even speak again. But I'm here today, I'm standing, I'm walking, I'm jumping. And now, I get to sing and speak about the goodness of God. And as we sing this, this song, I, I pray, it, it became my anthem, it became my song. I pray that it might bless you in whatever season you're going to. That no matter what walls or mountains you face, God is greater and He is good. Amen.
friend of mine sent me this video in email, and I passed over it time after time. I said, I'm not going to watch a stupid video from somebody in email. And I just kept disregarding the fact that it was there. And then this week I turned on the video and I watched it through. And I saw this young man who just a short time ago was facing death. A singer whose voice was gone. Whose legs were gone. He didn't look like his legs were bad there. His voice was great. But he faced the possibility that everything was going to be gone and he would live like a vegetable. And his song was, It Doesn't Matter. While I'm walking around these walls, I'm going to keep praising him. I've had some rough times recently, and I know you have too. But starting two years ago, I buried my youngest brother's oldest son, and then my oldest brother's oldest daughter. And then last year, a year ago, I buried my brother. And this past March, my dad. And I've got some of these same ailments that I was talking about that Stuart had. And I, I understand what's going on because there's several people in here with the, the bouts of neuropathy and the pain that goes with that every day. But this young guy showed me something this week. We don't have to let this take us down. We don't have to be affected by the stuff that comes against us. Because we have a great God and a great promise that He will take care of us even through the hard times. He may not take the hard times away from us, but He will take care of us through those times. Now, it's good for us as a church body to know this. And we've got just a little time left. And I'm going to use my invitation time. I'm going to ask you to do something we don't normally do. If you would, if you're able to, stand with me. And I'm going to play just the music portion of this again. And we may not play all of it. But I want you to take an opportunity now. I want you to share your faith share your walk. If you know somebody in this auditorium right now, you know about their anguish and their pain and their, their mental depression and their anxiety and the hurts that their bodies are going through, or somebody just going through a financial disaster right now, if you know that person, when we play this music, I want you to go to them and I want you to put your arms around them and I want you to pray for them. I want you to share their pain. Now, I want to do something else. I want you to do this. You guys look around. How many of you in this auditorium would like somebody to come to you and pray with you right now? Just raise your hand up. Here's one. Here's one. Another. Barbara, I meant to mention you today, but I didn't get to you. Anybody else who would like to have someone come and pray for you right now? Here's another back here. You look around and see who they are. We're going to play the song again. This is our invitation time. I'm also going to ask our prayer warriors to come forward. And if you'd like to come down here and talk to someone about a burden in your life or something you'd like to pray about. And if you don't know Jesus, if, I mean, you may know who He is, but is He part of you? If you accepted His salvation into your life, come down and do that this morning. Come on, do that today. Don't put it off. There's nothing safe in this world. You, you could have an accident on the way home and have missed the chance to know Jesus. Come do that. Prayer warriors, come down. Please take some time and pray with each other. I'm going to wait right here. You also come down and I'll pray with you. And we're going to listen to the music one more time. This is my 
invitation, and just as I am, is that what we're singing, brother? Sing a couple of verses, and then uh, we'll pray and be dismissed. Now, I just want to encourage you. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, man, no way. Don't, don't figure that you can do just a few more things, and then you'll turn your life over to Him. Don't ever think that you're so sinful that God wouldn't save you. Because God will save you. He saves murderers. He saves rapists. He saves people who do the most horrendous things, criminal activity we know. He just saves plain old sinners. He saves people who want Him in their life. Please come and take care of that today. Just as I am.